I welcome everybody who is interested in science, and today I will discuss the recent doping case of a famous Russian figure skater Kamila Valiva, who is currently performing in her first Winter Olympic Games in Beijing. Specifically, I will talk about what substances have been detected, how does it work, and whether the current decision of the court is an adequate one. So if you want to know more about this case, stay tuned, and you will know all the details. Let's go! Before we start, a short remark. Since I'm from Russia, I can easily foresee that some viewers may think that mm, I'm just uh, defending a Russian athlete. Therefore, I'm not objective. However, you can find in my video list a similar video about Simon Biles' case in Olympic Games in Tokyo. Link in the description below. And she's from the US. Therefore, uh, here we will only discuss the available information, ignoring personal sympathy. And now, let's start with an actual case. Go! Kamila Oliva is a 15-year-old Russian figure skater, 2022 European champion and the main favorite of 2022 Olympic Games in Beijing. In fact, in Beijing she has already become an Olympic champion in the figure skating team event and hold the lead after a short program in the individual competition. However, the recent news about her were mostly related to her doping probe, taking on the 25th of December at the Russian National Championship, which she won. However, Testing results became public only on 8th of February, directly after Russian Olympic Committee team won the figure skating team competition. So, what has happened? Three substances were found in her sample – hypoxin, L-carnitine and trimethazidine. The first two are not banned by the World Anti-Doping Agency, shortly named VADA, and Valiva listed them herself in her test form. So, no legal questions about their use, but I will explain later why I have mentioned them. The third one, trimethazidine, shortly named TMZ, uh, is banned. Why? Uh, trimethazidine is listed by WADA under the category of hormone and metabolic modulators. Very briefly, consider two options how a cell in your organism can get energy. First, beta oxidation of fatty acids. Fatty acids, for instance, um, well-known omega-3, are broken down inside your cells to produce energy. Second option, glucose oxidation. In that case, glucose is broken down to release energy. However, glucose oxidation requires less oxygen consumption compared to beta oxidation. Thus, if you, for some reasons, have a decreased blood supply, for instance after the extensive exercises, it's beneficial to inhibit beta oxidation, as a consequence enhancing glucose oxidation. Thus, due to more efficient energy metabolism, your organism um, could perform at a higher level for longer. So basically, your endurance is increased. If you consider non-athletes, then it's the most used to treat angina. Uh, during angina, you may have a shortage in uh, blood supply in your heart, and TMZ uh, helps to maintain the proper functioning. Actually, it wasn't that hard. Okay, the story about the banned substance is clear. But what about the other two, the legal ones? They're taken together and supplement each other. Hypoxin facilitates oxygen supply to the cells of your body and L-carnitine facilitates the transport of fatty acids, therefore supporting beta oxidation pathway. And here we come to a contradiction. On one side, you take two legal substances, declare them and they organically work together. Then you decide to take a banned substance, TMZ, that work against the, medic the medicines you officially use because it inhibits beta oxidation pathway. Does it make any sense? An open question. It could be another um, non-classical metabolic way of how these components work together. But this question should be then addressed by the experts. Valiva's lawyer also claimed that the prohibited substance could accidentally come to her organ. For instance, um, she might have come into contact with the medication on the surface and then somehow ingested it, or uh, the more recent version that she was contaminated by, uh, with the medication potentially via contact with her grandfather, who appeared by Dizio uh, to say that he does take this medication. Well, these statements uh, do raise some questions as well. For instance, Team Z is prescribed to be taken several times per day, meaning that its concentration uh, fades quite rapidly, minimizing the chances to be uh, contaminated by these surface contacts. But the opposite question is, what is the sensitivity of an assay used in the doping laboratory? Uh, without knowing these details, it's really hard to check whether any type of these transmissions could lead to a positive test. Also, there was a case when a Russian athlete Nadezhda Sergeyeva was initially banned due to TMZ in her body. Um, even though at low concentration, but again, similarly as in Valiva's case. She could prove in the court that she took it without knowing it. How? In court, her representatives uh, refer to the fact that the uh, Team Z 
was not indicated on the packaging or in the description of the legal supplement she took. Later, the company representative explained this as the following. It is allowed to produce several medicines on the same manufacturer line. Basically, during one month, the medicine, is pro uh, the medicine prohibited for athletes is produced and on the next one, not prohibited. Apparently, the purity standards used by local authorities and the standards set by WADA are different. Is it a problem of an athlete? How could she be aware about all these details that came into the spotlight only after the investigation? Finally, the question many supporters asked when the first news about Valiva doping probe leaked to the media. Why now? One day after the figure skating team event. As been said, the probe was taken on 25th of December. WADA has said Russian officials failed to label the batch of samples as high priority for analysis, and only priority tests were being handled while the lab was short-staffed during a January wave of COVID-19. Uh, could be the case. However, officials from Russian anti-doping committee state the, stated uh, that Stockholm lab informed them that the results would be available before the end of January. But then another delay, exactly till the end of the team competitions. Could it still be a coincidence or misunderstanding? Well, it's possible. Possible, but not likely. But again, uh, these facts should be clarified. It seems that uh, the official statements contradict each other. It is important to understand the truth. I will quickly discover the truth of all this. What I'm trying to uh, point here is that there are still some pending questions and also proven cases when the accidental intake of a prohibited substance happened. Of course, it is the task of the athlete and the lawyers to prove it, but here comes a point. If you uh, disqualify Valiva now and later it turns out to be a mistake, you cannot revoke this decision. It's done. And for athletes, Olympic Games could be um, the highest point of their sport career. The stakes are high and according to uh, International uh, Olympic Committee member Dennis Oswald, lawyers for Valiva presented elements that brought some doubts about her guilt a factor which helped to persuade the, these three judges to uh, let her continue to compete at the Olympic. So here, the decision was not about whether she is guilty or not, but whether there are reasonable doubts about her guilt and therefore a chance that she may later prove her innocence. So we need more time. And to minimize the side effects in case Valiva is guilty, International Olympic Committee decides no medal ceremonies for a team event and no medal ceremony for women's single skating competition in case Valiva finished amongst the top three competitors. So many medal ceremonies will be organized once the case's Valiva is concluded. Here comes an ethical question. Why some people around the world stated that Valiva is indeed guilty before the final decision of the court? For instance, uh, CEO of uh, US anti-doping agency Travis Tiger said that the identification of other two substances, again, the two substances that were allowed and declared by Valiva, is an indicator that something more serious is going on. You use all of that to increase performance, he said. It totally undermines the credibility of Valiva's defense. <laughs> As a matter of fact, it does the opposite, at least from the scientific point of view. And I assume that uh, CEO of US anti-doping agency knows the biology we just discussed. Or, for instance, uh, New York Post stated that Valiva is a cheater. Um, a popular uh, figure skating blog from Dave uh, Lee said that uh, Valiva's case led to the conclusion that it is okay to use performance enhancing drug. I, I mean, logic is completely unclear in this case. So, how about to wait to, uh, to wait for a final decision, especially when the professional judges, independent professional judges, stated that there are doubts in her guilty, but apparently some bloggers do not have any doubts. Let's see uh, what will be the end of the story. I have not said that Valiva is not guilty or that she is guilty. It is a work of the judges to make a final decision. But for now, I just hope that the best skater wins. Hope also that you like this video and we'll be glad to address all your questions in the comment section below. As usual, every comment will receive a response and for now, I hope to see you soon.